What is up guys, Mr. Bazy here, and today we're going to be doing Michaela Law's newest game demo, uh, all for you. Now, I haven't really been following this too much, and that's partially been on purpose, because I've kind of wanted to go into this raw, gross, uh, but, but that's really just because all the other ones, I kind of formulated an opinion, I kind of knew what it was about, I kind of anticipated stuff, and so this one will be interesting, because it'll be like me and you are going through it pretty much the first time and we don't know nothing about it, you know what I'm saying? So, I think it'll be a pretty cool experience. Uh, maybe I'll do the rest of my game demos like this from now on. Usually, I do a bit of research to prepare myself, but who knows? Maybe it's better like this, you know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, let's jump into it. Uh, just based on the four girls that are apparently passed out sleeping in some grass, I don't know what to expect, you know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, let's get it kicked off. All right. Whoa! Oh. Ew, pocket kiss? What kind of bullshit? Sakura? What the fuck? The fuck bitch from Naruto talking to me? Ew, what the- <laughs> Right off, dude, okay, like, the first two sentences were like, we're gonna- Say it! <laughs> oh. What? Can you talk a little fucking faster? It's like, we've been working together for a while. I value your intellect more than anything else. I can't help but, what, admire my log? I bet you that's what you're going to say. Come on, you, you, you look, you're looking at it. I mean, I, it's impressive. I get you. Ew, dude, we really are beating it right now. I can't, I can't believe this. Say it. Ew, ew, come on! Yeah, we're totally beating it right now. We're, like, this is- we're- we're, we're uh, we're, we're messing with it right now. Okay, maybe we're both about to bust. Is this- is this a busting simulator? I mean, I don't know what this is. Oh, I did it. Okay, yeah, that was definitely a bust. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Hello? Riley, are you raising your voice at me? You in- Dad, you interrupted my massing sesh. Maybe. Riley? Is everything okay? Bitch, I was just rubbing. We will turn around and... <laughs> I was rubbing my tip. I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hi, Dad. Oh, stop it. Riley's probably just playing that video game again. Oh, you know about it? That's a little weird. It's not just a video game, Mom. It's a simulation that teaches social interaction and character development through work and dedication. In other words, Riley's right hand substitute. Delicious. Why would you say that? It's kind of gross. Like, just imagine saying that to your, like, to your, to your child. <laughs> Dad! Enough, enough! Riley, we just got off the airplane, and we're making our way to our connection. Have you packed everything you needed for school? Uh, yeah, Mom. <laughs> Good. I know this was such short notice, but at least everything worked out, right? You'll get the whole house to yourself for a couple of weeks, and your nagging parents exactly. won't be there to bother you. I'm beaten, I'm beaten all over the house. All over. Yeah, I guess. Alright. Make sure you don't stay up too late playing that game now. You need sleep. I'll, I'll do what I want. <laughs> yes, Mom. All right. We love you. I love you, too. Ugh. I'll just finish her route and go to bed. We definitely did just pick right up. Like, this kid is, is reckless, man. He doesn't care. He gets interrupted because that would ruin the mood. You know what I'm saying? You, you're about to write right there, and then someone calls. It doesn't even matter. It's your parents. Somebody calls, interrupts it. He's like, I'm finishing, man. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, she loves me. Perfect. Now I can start another girl's route tomorrow. What the? Wait, this is a this is a, something to teach social interaction. But he said, but this chick comes out and says, "I love you," and then we're like, "Fantastic!" Now I can go. Now I can go start with another girl. <laughs> it makes sense. That's how he's gonna be in real life too. I bet. It's funny how life is full of opportunity and choice. We never really take our choices into consideration until we look back on them with either regret or joy. The things we do and say become stepping stones of our lives. It's pretty poetic if you think about it. Our futures are dependent on the choices of our past and present. As a teenager about to graduate high school, the question of my future practically shouted obscenities against my face. Uh, gross. I was going to mature into something more than a young adult. I was going to start my life as an independent person in society. The thought of that was scary beyond belief. I didn't know if I was ready to face my future. I wasn't sure if I wanted to face it at all. Did every teenager feel like this? Was this life's rite of passage from being a child to becoming an adult? I was 19, technically and legally an adult. I was a senior in high school and only a couple of weeks away from grabbing my diploma and being let loose into the world. I had no idea how to prepare myself. 
How was I going to be ready for what the world had in store for me? How was I going to be ready for a job, a family, and getting old? You, you don't really get ready for getting old. You just It just happens. You know, your nips sag and your balls drop and everything more than they normally would. Would I be happy with the job I pick? Would I enjoy every day with the person I love? If you pick the right person, what kind of question is that? Would I ever make decisions I'll regret forever? Probably. There was no way to be sure, no matter what I thought. Still, something in my gut told me that I was going to figure it out. The ringing in my ear wasn't so friendly, though. Ugh. Busted. The blaring of my alarm clock echoed loudly in my ear and through my room as I unwillingly opened my eyes, waking from my previous peaceful slumber. My body ached, pleading with me to sleep just a little while longer. However, I had set the alarm for a reason. I fought against every nerve in my body and sat up, grabbing my smartphone and turning off my alarms. As the noise ended, I let out a, con a content sigh. Before I could fall back on my pillows, though, I forced myself to push my legs over the side of my bed and I stood up. The sun peeked in through my curtains, flashing against my eyes as I stood at a perfect angle to the protruding sunlight. I groaned and shut my eyes, blocking it from its painful rays. As I stepped forward and I slowly and slowly opened the curtains, the sun came in and brightened my, my room at last. A yawn escaped my mouth. Today was going to be a rough day. I could already feel it in my ass. <laughs> My mind began to slowly grind through thoughts of the day. Today was a pretty important day, so I had to make sure I didn't screw it up by doing something stupid or messing anything up. As I showered and brushed my teeth and washed my cheeks, I ran through the plans of the day. Pack my bag, head to school, go to the office, get my schedule, be a regular student, try not to get pushed into a locker. Sounds good. I sighed. Today was me getting used to a new school. It was strange going to a new school mid-semester, but I didn't have a choice in the matter. My old school had a strict rules about every student's living arrangements. What? <laughs> Since my parents were out of, wor out of town for work, I was essentially forced to go to another school because of potential negative behavior due to neglect. Wait, what the heck? I instead of being a safe haven for you, for your, your potential abuse, you just gotta get the hell out. <laughs> like, what the hell? What kind of school even has that rule? Luckily, there was another public school that accepted all of my school credits and allowed me to attend, despite the awkward timing. I guess I had to thank my lucky stars. I got the house to myself and I was going to graduate on time. What I wasn't excited for was the idea of adapting to a new school and meeting new people. I wasn't exactly a social person, but I didn't know if, I, if it would matter. Being the new kid at the end of the year, it wasn't like anyone was going to try to be close to me, right? Right. Oh, we're just like looking at ourselves in the mirror like fucking... I stopped for a moment, staring at myself... Sickic, man. I became entranced by the minor dark circles under my eyes and unbrushed hair on my head. Had I really grown up? Ew, what the fuck? <laughs> Was I really graduating in less than two weeks? My eyes traveled down my neck towards my abnormal body mark, signed over my skin like some sort of weird brand that singled me out from other from a lot of other people. Uh, what? <laughs> when people saw it, they wouldn't stop pointing it out because of how abnormally perfect it was on my chest. On my chest, just over where my heart would be, I had a tan, heart-shaped mark. It, it had shown up randomly one day, and I only assumed that it was some sort of reaction to being in the sun for too long, or an allergic reaction to some medicine I took. Wait, what the heck? Why, why, why would you be ashamed of that? I mean, if anything, some girls might think that's kind of cute, having like a heart on your chest, like a visible one, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I feel like some, some chicks would, would dig that. However, the longer I had it, the more I accepted it as a new part of my skin. Oh my god, it's a new part of my skin. Not many people saw it except for my family, so it didn't really bother me much. Still, it was something that caught me, caught my eye each time I was shirtless in the mirror. Well, but how many times are you going to have your shirt off? You know what I'm saying? I shook my head and washed my face. I highly doubted anyone at the new school would ever see it. As I finished washing my face, my phone rang with copyrighted music ushering me to answer. Hello? Hey, how is everything going? Are you ready for your first day of school? Yeah, I just finished washing my cheeks. Mom, you called me last night. You don't need to check up on me the morning after. I know, honey, but I can't help but be ecstatic. You're going to a new school. It's exciting. Fantastic. I rolled my eyes with a smile. My mother was always the eccentric type. Luckily, my dad's almost militaristically cold expression managed to balance their dynamics out whenever they were, were together. Are you truly prepared, Riley? I just finished mom. I just finished telling... Ew, I just finished mom. I just finished telling mom that I thoroughly washed my cheeks. They're polished, okay? I just finished thoroughly polishing my cheeks, I can see myself in my own ass. Yes, sir. You got your transferal papers, supplies, permission slips? Absolutely. Did you clean your room, brush your teeth, use fresh deodorant? Yep, yep. Dad, I I'm good. I'm 19. I look, I even washed under my balls, for Christ's sake. I got it, okay? 
I heard my dad grumble on the other end of the phone before my mother took it and giggled into the microphone. All right, all right. Now you've gone and made your father grumble. Now we'll never no. get him to smile today. Well, unless I... Oh! Unless you do what? Make him grumble in other ways? With with some... some well, let's not go there. Cue the gagging noises. We, we might be going there. I mean, hey, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, Mom, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, don't forget. We'll be sending over a daily allowance just in case. But don't spend it on... We'll not spend it on hookers and blow. I promise you. Maybe. <laughs> I know, I know. Don't spend it on food. The fridge is packed and I can bring stuff to school for lunch. I got it. All right. Have fun. All right. As I hung up the phone, I stared down at it. My parents had never gone out of town before, so I couldn't help but wonder what they were up to. I knew that they were part of some archive group that documented history for some company, but to call them out for a job out of state seemed odd. I shook my head and left the bathroom to get dressed, turning to my thoughts back to turning my thoughts back to school. I just had to be myself. I wasn't planning to be a prom king or a valedictorian. I just had to get through the last two weeks of the school year and graduate. The bright white numbers on my phone signaled for me to hurry up with the time. 6.30 a.m. I groaned and rolled my eyes before rushing to the kitchen and fixing myself breakfast. With a piece of toast jammed in my mouth, gross, I packed a lunch as well. Nothing like leftovers for lunch. <laughs> With my bag fully packed and my stomach full of, uh, basically just bread, I headed out. The school was a 15 minute walk away from my house, so I had to get, I had time to get to the office, settle everything, and head to, for my first class without incident. Alright, what the, this is the same road as Valentine Panic. <laughs> uh, the heat of summer turning to, so oh, you know what? That just means it's in the same universe, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, seduce me. Uh, with the cafe and then Valentine Panic was in the cafe and then this is the same image <clears throat> as the one with the cafe so we can all assume all this is in the same universe you know what I'm saying Lisa's over there getting totally dominated by demons while we're you know just some high school kid the heat of spring turning the summer beat against my head as I walked I began to imagine a perfect summer lazing around in my house and enjoying time away from desks and homework it seemed like a dream too good to be true but it was going to be a reality in a matter of weeks I let a chill smile brush over my lips as I imagined it oh dude <laughs> just get through the school year and graduate Riley then you'll be home free I almost whoa I almost became lost enough to ignore the sound of Quick rolling wheels skidding across the brick cement sidewalk behind me. Yeah, slow down! Oh shit, bitch, quiet. Damn, <laughs> loud. <laughs> Look out! Oh my god. Oh, what is this? Hold on. Oh my god, dude. What the hell? Isn't it hot? You're wearing just like mad sweats, running gear, and everything. Uh, the sound of shouts behind me forced me to turn my head and spot a pair of girls speeding down the sidewalk towards me. The girl in the wheelchair was frightened beyond compare, while the girl guiding her chair was grinning from ear to ear. Holy crap! <laughs> Jumping out of the way onto the grass, I stared wide out as the girl in the wheelchair was being forced forward in a sprinting speed across the cement by a much taller woman in casual sportswear. Huh? Hey, I know you! Wait! Oh, you know me? Huh? All of a sudden, the wheelchair was brought to a screeching halt. The girl in the sports clothes stared at me with a raised eyebrow as the girl in the wheelchair let her gaze burn into mine in familiarity. Uh, can I help you? I know you somehow. Bitch, how do you know me? Huh? You know this person? Do you know her? Uh, no. I've never seen this chick before. Just making sure. Your wheelchair looks mad fancy. What the hell is that about, dude? Damn, uh, Professor X over here? I examined the girl in the wheelchair, unsure of why she thought she knew me. I wasn't new to the neighborhood, so maybe she had seen me somewhere before. However, I couldn't recognize her. Huh? Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think we've ever met. The look on the girl's face continued to flare with irritation, irritated con concentration, like she was trying to find something that was bothering her on my face. <laughs> um, Sydney, we gotta go. I got practice soon, and you gotta get a head start on that science project thing you're working on. What in God's name is happening? Okay. Sorry about that. Damn, like what an introduction to society, right? Shit. <laughs> At last, the girl named Sydney smiled and waved her hand through the air, attempting to wave off her thoughts physically. The sports girl, however, crouched down and raced forward, building back up to the speed they were rushing at before. Oh, what the heck? Oh, it was like a double bust? This is too sensitive? They eventually vanished over the horizon in the direction I was heading in. Were they students from the school I was going to attend? A part of me hoped that wasn't the case. Oh, damn, that's fucked up. Well, you didn't like that? I thought they were kind of nice. You know, it was a little weird, you know, but it was pretty... They, were, they weren't mean. <clears throat> 
Still, I stepped back onto the sidewalk, taking in what had happened and shook my head. That was really weird, even for Chicago standards. What the heck? Then again, I went to a private school. Chicago public schools were very different in terms of behavior acceptance and leniency. I guess that was why they accepted my credits and let me graduate with their class. I rolled my shoulders back and continued forward, letting the event trickle back into my memories as I made my way through town towards my new school. Luckily, I didn't meet anyone else on the way there. Instead, my way was blocked by a large group of people ogling, ew, ogling? There's like fucking flopping shit around? I don't, I don't even know what that means. Something I couldn't see. What the? Damn. Doesn't she look cute? Oh, maybe they yeah. are doing that. Oh my god, her outfit is to die for. Oh. Alright, look over here. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Whoa, what is this now? Alright, what, what? Dude, your legs are spread at a very awkward angle, whatever. Okay, well now I know why everyone's like, like fucking going crazy. Peeking over the shoulders of the crowd, I could barely see a pair of girls at the front of the gate. One was very pretty, with an outfit that almost screamed rich girl, <laughs> while the other had a high-tech camera and clothes that were littered in cute food icons. Uh, I don't see, unless those are goldfish or some bullshit, I don't know, I don't see food icons. Oh, maybe there's some cherries and shit, yeah, yeah just food icons. Bitches wearing food. From the look of it, this entire situation was just a fashion photo shoot. Why it was being held up against the school gates, I would never know. But I had to somehow get around it in order to get to the office. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> are you done yet? We have to head over to the next area. Just a minute, I'm almost done. Hold still. After a few more clicks, the girl with the camera looked down at the screen of it and examined her work. I tapped my foot, hoping this would be done soon. What is going on here? Oh, busted, bitch. Whoa. What the hell? Look like you're about to... This looks like one of those... Uh, it looks like a uh, like a trainer in Pokemon, doesn't it? <laughs> like, this is how they come out when they're battling? It definitely does. I don't know. That's definitely a stance. She has that stance, too, kind of. Well, you know, one of the Pokemon people that are pissed. As if the voice had magical powers, everyone's heads turned to see a girl staring hard at the working pair with her arms crossed. Good morning to you too, Lady Killjoy. Look, I know you both need to do your photo shoots for your portfolios, but can't you take it somewhere that won't blot traffic? We've been here since 6 a.m. though. We didn't know it would take this long. Nevertheless, can you please take this somewhere else now? I'm sure everyone here wants to get inside and not stand around in the blazing heat. Without another word, the pair nodded in acknowledgement and quickly packed their things before heading away from the gate. Obediently, some of the crowd followed them, wanting to, to watch more of the shoot. The girl who commanded them to leave vanished as well, most likely blending in with the crowd that was going inside or going off somewhere else to right some other wrong on school grounds. I shook my head. Now was not the time to dwell on it. I had to get inside to register for my new classes, though I was pretty sure that I, I would be excused from all of the assignments regardless. Rolling my shoulders, I walked inside, ready to register and get started. All right, everyone, we have a transfer student, so mind your manners. The first entrance is always the craziest. Even after meeting the dean and arranging my schedule, the first step into a new classroom was by far the scariest part of being a new student. Who knew what the others would think of you? Without hearing a word, you were already doomed to be judged based on how you looked or how your face painted your express. Oh my god, please, can we just enter the class like... I just want to, I want to enter with that sort of demeanor so everyone knows to stay the fuck away from me, you know what I mean? You had to be confident but humble at the same time. Prepare for the worst thoughts and ideas about you to prepare in everyone's minds. If you spent too much time on it, the thoughts of the first impressions you gave would turn you into a recluse. Still, I had to step in. I walked into the classroom and looked at the other students in, my, in the room, interested to see who I would be spending my two weeks with. To my surprise, I recognized a handful of faces. Instantly, my eyes spotted the girls I had seen before even entering the school. Each of them stared at me and returned to my gaze as I mentally recollected each of them. Oh, there's the wheelchair chick. What caught my attention was Sydney, who was anchored at the side of the room, staring at me in surprise. While I was surprised to see her in class, the expression on her face seemed to be on the extreme end of shock. Before I could do anything to silently respond, however, Sydney rubbed her eyes and shot her gaze to, the cu to her custom desk. This bitch is a custom desk. Scribbling notes on a piece of paper. What was up with her? I took a breath, nonetheless, and introduced myself. Hello, my name is Riley. The class acknowledged my presence one way or another, some with a nod, a wave, or a silent judgmental stare. I expected as much and held my ground regardless. At least my greeting wasn't met with anything, cult, with anything odd. The teacher finally cleared his throat and pointed to an empty desk at the center of the room. Oh, Go ahead and take that desk. After the center? In, we'll start today's lesson. Dear God. 
No matter who was teaching, I always managed to find learning new subjects in any classroom sporific. What the fuck? Now that I was in a new school, that feeling seemed to increase tenfold. Maybe it was because I was only going to be there for a short while. Maybe it was because I went to a private school where the curriculum was higher on the education scale. Nevertheless, sitting in that class proved to be dull. Oh, damn. The lecture continued on and on, to the point that I began to imagine time moving through thick sludge. Gross. It became relieving to hear the class bell go off, signaling the next set of classes. Finally. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was met with classes of the same caliber, teaching lessons I already knew or didn't particularly care for. I even had to spend my lunch period being attacked, or atta <laughs> being attacked by a teacher, being attached to a teacher's hip as they gave me an unwanted tour of the school so I wouldn't get lost, despite having a map of the school already. It was like the school expected me to bleed the school colors in the short amount of time I was there. Luckily, I wasn't expecting to do any I wasn't expected to do any of the tests or pass since I was only going to be there for attendance. At least that was a perk. I was dragged all around the school. I saw glimpses of the science wing, the music hall, the art rooms, the whole shebang, even the doors to the courtyard, the courtyard, <laughs> the courtyard and the outdoor track. At the end of it, I was exhausted from walking around. I didn't get time to explore each feature, so I was left with imaginary images of each section of the school. Uh, walking to class after the tour became almost a daunting task. How did this school manage to be so huge? Despite this, I continued on. I marched down the hall before noticing a large jock handing a large... Ew, a large jock? <laughs> handing a large textbook to a familiar red-headed girl rolling down the hall. Thanks for lending me your science book, Sydney. Oh, no, did you... A large jock? You let him copy your homework. Oh, no. Ew. <laughs> I watched as Sydney place the book on her lap and waved to the jock slightly, watching him leave. However, her gaze wandered to me as she turned her chair, pausing to stare at me. This is some weird music, like there's something fishy going on, like something shady, you know what I'm saying? I could only stare back as she concentrated solely on looking at me. Her head tilted slightly and her eyebrows furrowed in thought, almost causing me to do the same. After a second, Sydney quickly turned her chair and continued down the hall, lowering her head towards her lap to break our gaze battle. What the heck was that about? That's it? As I expected, the remainder of the day was slow. Everything my classes taught or went over were subjects I already knew. Luckily, I was excused from any tests and finals they required, but the attendance requirement began to grate on my nerves. Even the final class of the day, which for me was a class called Senior Studies, gave me an excuse to daydream a little. All right, class, just as a reminder before you go, in-class work on your final presentations will begin on Wednesday. Make sure to come in with your ideal topics, and we'll assign partners when class begins that day. I realize. Final presentations? Did that mean I had to sit through lectures from other students? I began to mentally groan at the idea. As the bell rang, I could feel my entire body just let out a sigh. I didn't expect the first day to be so slow, but at least it wasn't mind-numbing. Hey, Sydney. You want to walk together to your science club thing? <laughs> it's on the way to the gym for sports club. Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> that's fucked up. Hmm? Sure, I'd like that. Jessica, Ew. are you free for some afternoon shots for photo club? Sorry, Benny. I have some business to attend to with film club. Ask Kayla to fill in for me. I'm sure Lady Killjoy would enjoy a little photo shoot. Damn, you really call- that's like- you don't even call her by her name. What's up with that? Insult aside, I unfortunately have to go to a student council meeting. I have a feeling it will be exhausting. Drat. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure something out. See you both tomorrow. Oh my god. A small interest rippled in my brain about looking into the clubs I overheard about, but another, larger part of me just wanted to make my way home. Maybe I could stop at the mall or something on my way. Then again, I could study a bit here or use the track. Study? <coughs> uh, run the track. Study here. Uh, that's boring. Model for art class? Um, am I just gonna be showing off my log and, and raisins? What's going on? Something else. What's that? Play cherry blossoms? No. What the fuck? In school? Go home. Uh, visit the mall. Something else. That's all? Alright, I'm showing off my log. You decided to do some modeling. Fantastic. I walked into the room feeling pretty nervous, but it turned out everyone there was really friendly and looking forward to drawing me for some reason. They all noticed. <laughs> I thought maybe I'd have to get naked. Oh! Are we doing it? Or wear some weird costumes. But mostly they just wanted me to sit there and look natural. Oh, boring. It was hard to sit really still. And it was also pretty boring. Just doing nothing but looking ahead, but I but I managed. 
It wasn't really until after when it became sort of fun. A lot of the artists came up to me to talk to me and, and some even showed me what they sketched. It was pretty cool to be part of an art project like that and I was even asked to come back. Oh, oh, I charmed them with my with my uh, my nice cheeks, right? Yeah, you got that you got that good angle, man. I, I made sure of it. Arriving home, I felt exhausted. I reminded myself of everything that happened and how it occurred. The next two weeks solely relied on me just going and being a fly on the wall. <laughs> but I didn't want to bore myself. Maybe making a friend would be beneficial. I dropped my bag on the couch in the living room and began to shuffle through the kitchen, wondering what to make for dinner. I could order out, but I was on a strict allowance. My thoughts broke only at the sound of my phone going off with more copyrighted music. Hello? Hey, honey. I just wanted to check in and see how you were doing. Oh, hey, Mom. I was just about to make dinner. Oh, good. Good. Well, how what was your first day? You're still on Dad, aren't you? It was all right, I guess. I'm only going to be there for two weeks, so it's not really important for me to get adjusted to it. Oh, honey, don't think like that. You never know. You could find yourself graduating with a new friend. Maybe even someone more than a friend. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. Mom! <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie, Yo. we gotta go. The briefing is about to start. Oh yeah, the briefing. You're about to brief her with your log, aren't you? All right, all right. <laughs> well, have a good night, honey. Your father and I love you to pieces. Okay, hopefully not literally. Uh, love you too, Mom. A friend? Maybe, if I wanted to spend my time making friends. I didn't have to. I really didn't. Why would I care about anyone at school with only two weeks left of the school year? As I mindlessly began to prepare some sort of dinner for myself, I began to think about who I had met in school. A couple of faces popped up in my mind, but was, but was it worth getting closer to them knowing that after graduation, we would all part our separate ways? Some of them seemed interesting to get to know. Still, there was small discomfort with others. Im images of Sydney popped up uh, into my mind, her stu studious gaze at me in wondering who I was. How the heck could she have known me? I shook my head. If I wanted to make friends, then I would let my gut guide me into doing so. I finished dinner at last and lounged in the living room watching a new show. For me, anyway, Lawyer Hal. What? <laughs> Apparently, the new incarnation of the sci-fi space hero was going to be a woman. Uh, which was... What? What? <laughs> which sparked some controversy, but interested me enough to watch the show. Despite the controversy, she kicked ass in uh, episode one that I managed to watch. After I finished dinner, I began to ponder on what to do before bed. Since I was home, I was limited on what I could do, but that didn't mean that I couldn't do anything at all. Oh, I was about to beat my log, aren't I? Okay. Uh, prepare an outfit, work out. We're not playing cherry blossoms, man. What is up with that? <laughs> and I'm definitely not studying, because we don't need to, right? Like, we're going to just go be there. I could work out, but I think preparing an outfit would be a little better at this time. You decide to prepare an outfit. I walked into my room and dug around my closet, looking at the options of what I could wear for the following day. There were many things that I actually looked good in, hanging peacefully in my closet that I wondered why I didn't consider wearing them more often. I took my time, pairing different sets together and piecing tops to bottoms on my bed. Eventually, I managed to find an outfit I liked that made me feel good. Satisfied with the choice I made, I hung the outfit up on a hanger and placed it in my bathroom door on my bathroom doorknob. I felt myself grow a little more confident with the choice, even as I went to bed. All right, more charm. Will we get four for that? Oh, six? Okay. I mean, three? All right. Back on the road again, guys. I wasn't looking forward to walking to school alone. It wasn't that I'd never done it before, but it always just left me stuck alone with my wandering thoughts. Oh my god. That's really annoying. I began to think about my dating sims. They were part of my life, and I knew that eventually they were going to be my downfall socially. So he knows he's doing it. <laughs> Until then, I was able to mull on them in blissful silence. The game I was working through, Cherry Blossoms, had some interesting characters despite the story. I started thinking about Sakura, and if I replayed the game, whether I chose choose her or, again or not, she was a very smart girl, and her shy attitude towards me as a player was sort of entrancing. Oh, God. Sounded too cute. It's kind of gross at that point, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> On the one hand, she was my favorite, which was why I picked her first. But how did I know she was my favorite if I didn't try the other girls too? I'd only really picked her because I thought she had the cutest sprite. Hey, it's you! Oh shit, put my log away. <laughs> I recognized the voice yelling out at me right away. It's fucking Latifah again, hey. <laughs> Oh man, the two girls I had seen the morning before and in class rushed up to me. The athletic girl pushing the girl in the wheelchair forward to line up with my side. Good morning, Riley. Good morning, wheelchair chick. 
Good morning. What were you thinking about over here? You looked pretty deep in it. Oh, not yet. Not as deep as I could be. But uh, we'll, we'll save that for another, another time. Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> there was no way I was going to tell her that I was thinking about a visual novel. If she had even heard of them, she'd probably think it was porn. Looked kind of <laughs> important by the look on your face. Oh, God. Is it embarrassing? That's fine. We won't push things, right, Latifa? Oh, damn. She's trying to, she's trying to freaking, uh, she, you know, she's, she's trying to sign on me over here. It's not embarrassing. I was just thinking about a video game character. Are they from a visual novel? Bitch, what the fuck? Are you sick it too? Is that, <laughs> you're freaking... She is Professor X, just with hair. <laughs> huh? How did she guess? Yeah, uh, Cherry Blossoms. Really? I wanted to play that one, but it isn't in English yet. Do you know Japanese? I just got a fan patch for it. There's a patch out already? Yeah, bitch, look it up. Well, it's not perfect yet. Some of the interface is still in Japanese, but it's easy to work out. I'll have to look into that when I get home. Oh my god. Uh, you had to tell her that. She was supposed to play Battle Mech Warfare tonight, and now she'll just be doing that mess. I play that too! <laughs> need support, dammit! No one ever picks a healer! <laughs> Dude, honestly, you guys have no idea how funny that actually is, because my- All the time, almost all the time, my brother plays, uh, Overwatch, and I'm all the time hearing him- hearing him tell me about how his friends are always asking for a healer. So that's actually pretty funny. But yeah, man, I play both those games. <laughs> Sorry, I'll play with you first, okay? Oh, okay then. You better. Oh, God. She was pretty commanding. The two kept talking as we got closer to the school. It was one of those conversations that I'd have to force myself into if I wanted to participate, so I just mentally checked out and thought about if I wanted to eat the lunch I'd pack, I'd packed, or just buy something anyway. What I was able to catch, however, was that they were secret gamers outside of school activities. They went back and forth about strategies, trying to find the best one without putting it into practice. It was kind of cute. At least I wasn't the only one who valued games. When we arrived at the school gate, the two girls waved and went on towards the science wing. I marched myself inside, wanting to get to class early and maybe go through a chapter of Cherry Blossom. Bitch, we're gonna be playing in school? It's so weird. <laughs> I sat down and took out my handheld console, opening it and loading up my last save. Little did I notice that I was being watched. Ooh, what's that? Oh my god. <laughs> I jumped up, startled from the voice behind my ear. I quickly looked back to see the uh, photography girl with her hands held in front of her defensively. Oops, I'm sorry, didn't mean to scare you. Oh dear god. <laughs> Benny, what are you doing? She was spying on me. Like freaking cockroaches, they come out of nowhere, dude. Following up behind Benny was another girl, arms crossed in accusatory curiosity. I recognized her from the morning before, sending Benny and another student off to clear the entrance of the school. As if on cue with my thoughts, the student who was with Benny in the photo shoot stood from her seat and stepped up beside her photographer, despite being silent at the moment. Nothing. I was just looking at Riley's game. It looked cool. Oh my god. You could have tapped Riley's shoulder first instead of causing a surprise yelp to come out of the new student. Great. Oh, relax, Lady Killjoy. Benny Dude, was just curious. She really calls her that. I don't even know her name. I'm actually starting to like think of this girl as Lady Killjoy. Like, what is her name? And I would appreciate Kayla, if you go. would drop that <laughs> nickname for me, Jessica. It's our senior year. It's funny because I knew this one was voiced by Michaela Laws, and I didn't notice until now that her name is Kayla. <laughs> I will the moment you stop being so straight laced about everything. Says the girl with an obsessive regiment to her yeah. life schedule. What are you, crooked laced? <laughs> Ooh, did that burn to burn action just happen? It's getting hot in here! Oh, it is. My pants are coming off. What the heck was I watching? I hoped it wouldn't turn into a cat fight. Or did I? Just because I like to keep a schedule to my life doesn't mean I can't have fun. And just because I follow rules and regulations doesn't mean I can't enjoy things either. Pot, meat, kettle. Oh man, you are getting absolutely roasted over an open fire. I swear, if I was able to describe the air between Kayla and Jessica, I'd say there was there were vast amounts of lightning with the hissing of cats. Benny, however, turned her attention away from the battle and looked to my game. So, what are you playing? Um, crap, was today my social death day after all? I'm playing a dating sim, it's called Cherry Blossoms. Never heard of it, but the art looks really retro. Oh my god. Really? 
Let me see. <gasps> Bitch, you're interested in retro? What? <laughs> what the? It's a good thumbnail. <laughs> to my surprise, Jessica joined in at looking over my shoulder. Kayla, becoming the silent one, looked at my game as well, giving me an audience of three girls to my personal kryptonite game. Huh. Are those school uniforms? Yeah, bitch. Yes, it would seem so. Japanese, I assume. Oh my god. How do you know? <laughs> Some of the game buttons are in Japanese. See? When the heck did my game become an art piece to critique? That's so weird. But this looks really cool. What's it about? Uh... Whatever it's about, it <laughs> seems intriguing. Oh my god, they actually like it. This is so weird. Like, <laughs> I really thought I was going to get made fun of here. Well, knowing Japanese game developers... It could be about anything. That's true. The final boss could be a tentacle monster. All right, all right. Settle down. Let's get to our seats before the bell rings, okay? The girls finally separated from me and got into their seats. I, however, had to sign and cl uh, sigh and close my game, pocketing it. Guess I wouldn't be progressing in Cherry Blossoms after all. Oh, yeah. We were basically interrupted. We didn't get to play at all. Um, as the bell finally rang, we became trapped once more in a boring lecture about topics I couldn't really care about. Now, this theory may not be able to be proven, but the idea behind it is fascinating. Imagine you can do one thing here, yet do something entirely different in another thread of time. Do something entirely different? That's rich. At the same time, what if the choices we made in one thread affected another? That would prove the theory to be correct. The more I listened, the more unrealistic the lesson became. Was this really what public school students learned? Before I could think further, a piece of paper silently skittered across the top of my desk, into my view. It was folded up and didn't seem out of the ordinary for a note. Was it for me? Looking around, no one seemed to be interested in what was going on with me, so I couldn't tell who sent it and how. Still, I was too curious for my own good. I unfolded the piece of paper, unsure of what to expect. Help me with something in the science lab after lunch. Uh... Something sent a nervous shiver down my spine. Who is asking me to help them? Why do they want my help? Riley! Bitch, I'm reading. <laughs> huh? Yes? Since you seem to be disinterested in the lesson, I'm going to assume you know what theory I was describing. Can you enlighten the class as to what the theory is? Crap, I landed myself in hot water. What the heck was the teacher talking about? Uh... Multiverse theory? Probably, it's probably... Uh, I think it's this one, but like... This kind of makes sense for some reason. I don't, it's definitely not that, I don't think. I think it's multiverse. The teacher seemed surprised. Why? The theory itself was pretty self-explanatory. I mean, making different choices in the same, same setting? Come on. Outstanding. I apologize for assuming that you were not paying attention. Now let's continue. Yo, dude, he's like rubbing himself. That's right. Go me. <laughs> At least the teacher didn't seem to notice that I was reading a note. Lecture upon lecture, I began wiping each of them from my memory as they as they came. I attended class each class to fulfill my arrangement with the school to graduate, so I focused on myself. My mother's call the previous night, however, made me ponder a bit on her words. Make a friend. All right, before I knew it, I was seated in the cafeteria at lunchtime. I ate lunch and stared at the clock, noting its time. Lunch! Come on! Better get there before all the good stuff gets taken. Hey, wait up! <laughs> What's up, Peter? What the fuck? Just, well, wait, wait, wait. Peter went from having a main role to just being a student? Oh, God. Not that I doubted the integrity of the food uh, the school served, but I felt safer eating my own food regardless of what good stuff they had. At least I knew exactly what I was putting into my mouth. Gross. Still, sitting and eating lunch wasn't enough to fill my time. Luckily, I didn't have to take another tour, but I wanted to do something. Maybe now was the best time to explore the places the tour yesterday denied me. There were a couple of places I had in mind to look into. The question was, where should I go? Okay. Uh, so based on the silhouettes, I think I can tell. The music room... Well, for, let's, 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 let's uh, count these out based on what I can tell. Track is definitely the that one chick, the bossy chick, you know what I'm saying? Uh, with, the, with the sports gear. Uh, courtyard looks like that chick, definitely. See the little hand? That's, that's a, definitely her. First photo room, the, 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 um, the silhouette doesn't really look like her, but she had a camera, so I'm gonna assume it's her. Uh, music room has to be that other girl by default, the one that's all serious and shit, and the science room, science wing is that chick, I can tell, I can see part of her wheelchair, wheelchair right there, so. The note that, oh, right, the note. 
The note that was left on my desk bothered me. Someone wanted to meet me in the science room. I was a new student, though. Still, I was curious to know who wanted my help, whatever help it may be. I made my way through the halls, peeking into the rooms that had their doors open out of natural instinct. The classes everyone was taking seemed fun, as every student in the classes I saw seemed eager to participate in the lessons. Then again, it was a public school. Private schools focused on harsh realities and focused study. Public schools got to be a little more relaxed with their curriculums. Eventually, I found the science wing and managed to stick my head into a room I thought was empty. Oh! To my surprise, Sydney was in the classroom using one of the chemical stations for an experiment. What was even more odd was that she wasn't using any safety equipment. As she turned to look at me, I could only stare back at her like a deer caught in headlights. Hello, Riley. Oh my god, hello. Uh, hi. I slowly moved to exit the, the room fully, but stopped as Sydney slightly motioned for me to come inside. Please, come on in. Alright, if you insist. I felt a bit torn, but finally listened to my gut and stepped inside, curiosity guiding me to walk over and observe what the girl was doing. Oh, that's a pretty cool shot. Let's check that out. Okay. Uh, as I walked up to the chemical station, I didn't smell any sort of chemicals emit from Sydney or her flasks. Was she not using any chemicals of the sort? What are you mixing together? Hmm. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sydney's focus on the experiment she was pulling off seemed almost steely and cold. She looked at different beakers and flasks, observing the colored liquids inside, and either combining them or setting them aside in different spots on the desk. I couldn't help but stare in awe. If she was really combining chemicals, then what the heck was she up to? I didn't want to interrupt her again, but I felt myself become entranced watching her work. After watching in silence for a while, Sydney spoke at last, almost making me jump in my spot. I'm practicing for my final chemistry experiment. Okay, final chemistry experiment? Sydney nodded and lifted each beaker, showing them to me as she continued her explanation. I filled each beaker with water and different food dye to represent different chemical compounds I will be using for the presentation. Alright, you have like fucking on point, <laughs> like, enunciation, damn. So that's why she wasn't wearing any safety gear and there was no smell? Sydney not- yeah, I was gonna say, does she want to like end her suck or something? Sydney nodded as she lowered the beakers she had in her hands and looked at her chemical station. The last thing I want is to accidentally cause an explosion <laughs> during the presentation, so I'm trying to choreograph the entire thing. Do you okay. get what I mean? Yeah, trust me, I, I, like I said, I understand you not wanting to end your suck, it makes sense. Uh, I nodded knowing exactly what she meant. A lot of chemicals looked so similar in beakers, you had to be very careful what you mixed and what you didn't. As Sydney rolled back from the desk, <laughs> she looked up at me with a smile. However, I'm sure you'd rather know why I sent you that note. Did you, you know, maybe, I'm just throwing it out there, you know, doesn't, I'm just throwing it out there, but maybe you wanted my log, I mean, I don't know. I stared at her wide-eyed. Now she was going to mention the note, I'd had a feeling it was her, but regardless. Sydney le leaned back in her wheelchair and placed her hands on her lap, staring, at, staring up at me as if she figured out something from the look on my face. I wanted to know if I could work around you without getting nervous. I had a theory that, if I could, then my theory that I know you somehow had to be true. What? <laughs> I wanted to... What is happening? Okay, alright, uh, maybe. Wait, you get nervous? Sydney nodded and looked down at her lap. Silly, isn't it? Regardless, I know this may seem odd, but I do feel like I recognize you somehow and felt comfortable working around you. Okay. Have you been watching me through my webcam? I mean, I'm not going to be upset about that, you know, this stuff to show off, but I mean, have you just, 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 you know, come clean. I watched as a small blush, oh, she was watching it, graced the girl's cheeks as she rubbed her neck in embarrassment. As the bell suddenly rang, the girl rolled back and began to quickly clean her chemical station. Thank you for being here. My name is Sydney, by the way. If you ever need a quiet place to hang out, this room is always free during this period. Okay. Oh, thanks. With a soft smile, Sydney nodded to me and rolled out of the classroom into the hall. I followed suit, ready to head to my next class. The afternoon didn't seem to get any better from yesterday's example. There was, no, there was non-stop prep work for some sort of final presentation that everyone had to do, except me, of course. Before everyone leaves today, I just want to remind you all that we will begin finalizing our topics tomorrow. You will be assigned one partner to work with, so don't forget to bring in multiple options. 
Would I have to be partnered up? I imagine the school would have a backup plan for me, but they never said I had to do any work, just show up. As the bell rang for school, however, I began to think on what to do with my time. Alright, so let's see here. Uh, we can model for art class again, uh, but maybe we should try to do something else. We're definitely not studying. Uh, we're not playing Cherry Blossoms. We're not just going to go home. I don't really feel like visiting the mall. Alright, you know, screw it. We'll run the track. Maybe we'll meet that other girl there. Who knows? I've never really been one to exercise regularly, but with the change of school, there wasn't any reason I shouldn't use that change to slip into better habits. I felt a little awkward being there, and I had no idea what to do with myself. Um, especially after school with a lot of people in clubs and stuff. I placed my stuff in a safe spot and did some jogging around the track. Luckily, the track team was dismissed for the season, so the track was completely free to use. For some reason, running around the track felt extremely great. I wasn't fast, but was steady in my pacing, and I was able to do a couple of laps before needing to eventually stop. All in all, it was a good run. As soon as I was done, I grabbed my things and headed back home, exhausted but happy with the workout. Alright, looks like we get three each time no matter what we do, I guess. I finally made it home. As soon as I passed the archway of my front door, I let out a relaxed sigh. Day two, over. I tossed my bag onto the couch and began to make dinner for myself. Was this how the following 12 days would be? I'd go to school, ignore the lessons, and come home to eat and sleep. That seemed really boring. <laughs> Still, I had the option to make a friend and some opportunities were presented to me. I began to think about Sydney and her science experiment. She was extremely smart and careful with how she did things, but she wasn't as introverted as she made herself to be, right? However, her claims to have known me began to seep in a bit. If she knew me, was it possible to remember her somehow back? What is going on, man? I decided to let it go. People were picking partners at next class, so maybe I'd be excused or maybe I'd get the chance to be partnered up with one of the girls I had met. I wasn't sure I would find out tomorrow. I took my time with dinner and co uh, contemplated on what to do before bed. Alright, we already prepped an outfit. Uh, cherry Blossom, that would just be like a waste, I think. Okay, let's just work out. We already worked out. Let's just, you know, keep let's keep the trend going, you know what I'm saying? You decided to work out. Fantastic. Just because I was home alone didn't mean I got to skimp on being healthy. At least as healthy as I could be. I didn't want to be jacked up, but I at least wanted to climb stairs without constantly feeling like a tortured chain smoker. <laughs> when I got to the top. I changed into some baggy clothes and turned on the TV to a music channel. It played some nice tunes as I got onto the ground and began to pump out some sit-ups. After a couple of sets, I had to stop and breathe, staring up at the ceiling in amazement. I didn't know I could do so many, but damn, my stomach hurt after. After some push-ups and jumping jacks, I finally stopped for the night. As soon as I was done, I grabbed my things and walked into my room to prepare for bed, exhausted but happy with the workout. All right, oh. Getting more skill. That's right, boys and girls. Now we have uh, even six. I think we have. Wait, wait. We have six skill, and six charm, or six skill, three six skill and three charm. I don't know. I don't know exactly what we have. I think I think we have even. Uh, day three of school. I had to force myself out of bed as the weight of Wednesday began to trickle through my soul. Hump day. Never fun. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I could only hope I got through it without incident. Uh, I packed my lunch, threw my backpack over my shoulder, and made my way to school. To my surprise, Latifah and Sydney were not on the sidewalk, leaving me alone to my thoughts. After yesterday's stumbles with the dating sim talk, I was actually a bit glad to be alone walking to school this time. I made my way to the front of the school, joining other students and entering the building, and couldn't help but hear the multiple murmurs and conversations about the final presentations. Did you decide your topics yet? Nope. I'm just hoping it comes to me before class starts. <laughs> you suck. Hey, do you want to be my partner for the final project? Sure. What's your topics? Oh my god. Students were already picking partners. I guess it wasn't any of my business, but I couldn't deny my mental, my natural curiosity. Entering my first class, I could see everyone huddled in little groups, chatting, uh, chatting away about, still, about the damnable topic. <laughs> you sure you're gonna be good with your final, Nini? Whoever Ew. you pick as your partner might slack off. Nini? I thought your name was, uh, Sydney. <laughs> I'll be fine. Make sure you pair up with someone who cares about sports like you do so you don't get a bad partner, too. I keep forgetting her name. I keep thinking of wheel just wheelchair chick. Jessica, oh god, Betty, I feel terrible. Do either of you have partners? Nope. I'm waiting until final period to find a partner. Same. There's no point in pairing with someone who isn't in the same class as you during that time. Gayla, would you be my partner? I appreciate the offer, but I'd like to wait until final period to decide who to work with. So I cannot give you an answer now. Thank you, though. 
Okay, everyone seems so nervous. What was the was the final presentation that big of a deal for everyone? How much of a grade was it? All right, all right, settle down. Let's get started with first period. And with that, class began. For a brief moment, the nervous air revolving around the final projects disappeared to focus on the classes at hand. The other students had to wait to seal their fates, whatever that fate was to be. I felt a bit like a black sheep, unsure of where my role was in this chaos of finals. Was I required to help someone? Did I just have to sit and watch everyone? Both seemed gruesomely tedious. <laughs> Still, if I had to be involved, I had a couple of options to decide uh, from partner-wise. Every class after was the exact same. They began with con uh, conversations of partners, raising the tension in the air, then silence would claim the students' voices as classes began. I felt the twinge of desire to ask someone about them. My curiosity need to, uh, needed to know what exactly was happening was almost too high to control. But who to ask? Should I bother? I waited until lunch period on it. Man, this is like... I feel like there's some weird stuff going, like it's like a conspiracy or something. I don't know, like... I just hope I just hope we don't get like like snatched up and just thrown into the school dungeon or something, <laughs> into into the boiler room. I waited until lunch to ponder on it. There was no need to rush things, but I hated to be left in the dark. Maybe a teacher knew. Maybe another student could help me. Then again, with the amount of chaos occurring because of the simple mention of the finals, I was slightly afraid to ask a student what was going on. Students were talking left and right, either getting partners or discussing topics to present. I don't think the cafeteria could get any louder than it was then and there. How the heck is everyone so crazed about this? You're talking about the final, right? I'm sitting here talking to myself? <laughs> you heard that? Huh? Turning around, I was greeted by the sight of Kayla, Benny, Jessica, Sydney, and Latifah moving to my lone table and smiling kindly at me. Hey, mind if we join you? We all usually eat together on Wednesdays, and you're kind of sitting at the table we choose each week. I'm so lucky. Oh, we are so lucky. Could you imagine? Uh, sure. I was surprised to see the girls all together. Did they all know each other somehow? I usually saw Latifah and Sydney as a pair alone. Same with Benny and Jessica, unless Kayla showed up. Why were they all together? The girl sat down in the empty seats with Sydney, pulling up her wheelchair in the uh, space between Le Latifah and Benny. So, you're interested in why everyone is so tense? Uh, a little, yeah. Well, I'm sure you can guess, but our final presentations are a big portion of our final grade, not just for class, but in our senior evaluations. All right. Yep, we have to show that we know our shit. F fabulous. I like how it's like she fully said the word, but then here it's like she. Latifa. <laughs> stuff. Our stuff. We gotta know our stuff and show the school and the board that we didn't spend our four years here slacking off. And the final presentations prove that? Well, we're taught how to present information, and we've studied a lot of things during school. The school just wants us to show that we listened. The okay. entire school board will be present during our last day of class, where all of us will eventually show off our projects two by two. Great. You've gotten the schedule, right? Next Thursday is our deadline, when freshmen, sophomores, and juniors are starting summer vacation. Um, bitch, I didn't get shit. Wait, so the younger students get, get to get summer vacation early? Yep. It sucks big time, but it's a fair trade for the presentation. The more I listened, the more confused I became. Seniors had to stay an extra day before graduation for a final project for the board? Where was the logic in that? <laughs> what? So you had to sacrifice a day of summer for this? Is it really worth the grade? Yeah, like what the heck? A, a day of summer versus maybe a whole letter grade less. Are you, are you dumb? <laughs> the girls looked at each other, taking in my question. Kayla, however, cleared her throat to take the lead in replying back to me. It's not just for a grade, mind you. There's also a reward for the best presentation. Oh, what, what kind of reward? Money. Scholarship money, to be precise. Oh. Okay, well now it makes a lot more sense why everyone's all weird about it. I thought there was something weird going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't pass the presentation, you, you, you get uh, crossed off or something. Like, something so much more dastardly than what it made it out to be. But, okay, it makes more sense. Wait, really? If you plan to go to college, the board offers a large amount of scholarship money to the best presentation. You know, like that 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 thing on YouTube or whatever. Like, if you don't get the, if you don't pass that final test, you get culled or some shit because you know I guess there's too many people. I don't even know. I didn't watch it, but like just based on the freaking commercial or the trailer, you know, those people are like, hey, they have to take that test, and if they fail, they get, they get killed. I thought it was going to be the same premise, but okay. <laughs> however, if you decide not to go to school, the scholarship becomes a check for you to use however you want. Oh, really now? Is that possible? It's in the rules. A minor paragraph to cover students who do not apply to colleges. 
It's a loophole that the board often forgets to amend because they assume all of the students will go to a college of some form. Fantastic. And they don't check up with you afterwards? <laughs> so you can either go to school with a scholarship or you can spend your summer vacation with half of $10,000. Oh, delicious. Say what? I was flabbergasted. $10,000 for a final project? Actually, for most colleges, that's actually not that... Uh... It really doesn't cover too much, but I mean, hey, it's better than nothing, right? Even split between two people, that's $5,000 that can go anywhere. No wonder students were anxious, even the students that didn't really seem the pro-academic type. The girls collectively laughed at my expression and reaction. So, now you know why this is important to us. Yeah. We make the best presentation, we not only get to graduate, but we also might get a monetary reward. Makes sense. I mean, man, I'd be all over that, to be honest with you. Understand now? Yeah, I nodded, that was crazy. The girls continued to eat between speaking, but they gave me a, sm a small lecture of uh, the school, one I obviously needed to hear. The founders of the school, Marcus Taylor and Alexander Wright, wanted to ensure education for every child in the district, so they secured a practical fortune on the school with financial backers and stocks that were legal to use in their time. With that fortune came a building budget, one that secured the staff and continued to make the school grow. It cycled and continued to expand, even to this day, where the school had the ability to fund anything it needed, including the final project competition. That's pretty cool. That's why everything looked well kept for a public school. It wasn't run by the state, but rather by a legacy left behind. I had to admit, I was in awe as I heard the story of the school. The fact that the creators were smart enough to arrange a cycling budget for the school was mind-blowing. I couldn't help the desire to participate flicker in my mind. Yeah, now that, we, now that we know about the money, right? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, come on. $5,000? That's a beautiful number. I could use it however I want it. <laughs> there, there, there's that hookers and blow thought again. Uh, the question was, who would let me be their partner? As the bell rang, signal, signaling the end of the period, I began to ponder on my way to class. All right, I sat down in my final class, looking around at each of the students. Some seemed to be anxious to talk to someone, while others were confident, assumedly already paired with another. I wondered, was I even going to be allowed to participate? I wasn't exactly a true student of their school, so did the rules exclu exclude me? All right, class. Today is the day you decide partners. Make sure to have your list of topics ready. This was my chance to know. I raised my hand. Excuse me? Yes, Riley. What about me, bitch? <laughs> a hushed conglomerate of whispers rose along the rest of the class. Curious as I was, I stared at the teacher, waiting for an answer. Despite being the head of the class, the teacher cleared her throat and looked to Kayla. Miss Han, you are fully aware of the qualifications around the final project, correct? <laughs> she, she doesn't know. She's like, um, that bitch in the corner, you know what's going on, right? Uh, Kayla stood in her seat, which was odd for a student to do in an American school, and smiled back at the teacher with a nod. I am, ma'am. The rules state that any student in their 12th year of schooling will be required to participate. Does that include transfer students? There is no addendum or note about transfer students, ma'am. It simply says, any student in their 12th year. Thank you, Ms. Han. Uh, Kayla sat down and the teacher once again took control of the room. Riley, I will discuss terms with the board this evening. However, please participate today under the assumption that you will be doing a project with someone. It was a shot. I looked around the room and noticed a lot of people staring at me in either slight distrust or amazed intrigue. I thought of Sydney and turned my gaze towards her. I mean, this girl, you know, she seems to really get it. I mean, I don't know. She seems like, I feel like we have the most common ground with this chick. You know what I'm saying? She seems like a good chick. Um, she had a very precise plan set for the final. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. She already knows what she's doing. Maybe she needed an assistant. Who knew? She seemed like a very good option. Sydney looked back at me, toying with the pen she was nervously gripping as she smiled. Was she hoping that I'd work with her? Probably. This bitch is like, please, please choose me. <laughs> where, where, where's the pen? I don't have a pen, but I have a screwdriver. Oh, please, please, choose me, please. <laughs> I can't flip shit, man. I had to make a choice. Everyone slowly began to move, but time seemed to almost freeze for me. It was like some sort of deity or a string of fate wanted to know. Ew. Who was I going to choose? Fucking, fucking Skyrim? Who are you? <laughs> what the heck? I'm so Oh my god, there's more copyrighted music. Let's just give that a couple seconds and Michaela Laws, thank you. Okay, <laughs> I just couldn't let that go too long. I don't know if that's copyrighted. Oh shit! You are in more danger than you think. Talking to me, bitch? For now, I can protect you. But should you persist, 
I will not be able to stop fate. What? You have been warned. What? <laughs> what in God's name was that? Honestly, you know what I felt when I, when I was listening to that? Like, we, we uh, under the assumption that the Seduce Me universe is in the same realm, you know what I'm saying? So, magic exists, right, in that realm, in that universe. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe they'll kind of, maybe the stories will kind of merge a little bit. Maybe we'll see some, some, some mystical stuff, some paranormal stuff, some demonic stuff. We don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. We, you know, just based on the demo. Maybe this is why all these chicks are passed out. They're under a spell. <laughs> I don't know, man. But either way, it was cool. It was interesting. Uh, I actually kind of like the premise. You know what I'm saying? It, it makes sense. Um, and maybe based on that last little part and based on some of the weird stuff that was happening through the game, maybe there's a little twist to it of some sort. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I was kind of getting some Life is Strange vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just felt... Like, they were kind of hinting at certain things like that, but I didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, but either way, it was, it's interesting. I feel like I'm definitely going to be excited to play this game when it comes out. And don't forget, we actually have all these other routes to do. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not like it's going to be, you know, just this this one and then we're done. You know, we have a, a good amount to do in the demo. And basically, I'll, like, like all the other ones, when the actual game comes out, uh, if, if the routes are not too different than the initial one, then what I'll end up doing is more than likely just forwarding people to the demo playthroughs and then continuing on from there on after, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because at that point, I think it's going to allow us to choose who we're going to work with. Uh, and it would be pretty messed up if we were like messing around with Sydney the whole time and then we're just like, ah, let's choose that one, this chick. I don't, I don't even know her name. This is the hot chick. She's got her mouth open a little bit. Um, but yeah, so anyway. I, I like it. I, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be a pretty fun game when it comes out. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait. And I'll see uh, for the next video if I can get a release date for you guys uh, when this is uh, expected or estimated to come out if there's not a strict release date. But until then, make sure you rate the video what you think it deserves, whether you like it, dislike it. Uh, just make sure you rate it accurately the way you feel. That's all I really ask. Really, really helps me out a lot because then I actually get to see right off the bat what you guys thought of the video. Again, the comments really help as well because then I get to see more in detail what you thought and I get to respond back to you which is really awesome stuff. Speaking of that, if you did enjoy though, consider sharing the video as well. Uh, it really helps out a lot, I mean a huge, huge amount. Uh, helps the Sage family grow every single day every time you share the video. So if you feel like you, you can do that, if you feel like the video deserves to be seen, you know, friends, family, work, school, whatever it might be, social media, uh, all those things are really, really big help. So if you feel like you can do it, please make sure you do so. And with that being said, if you want to become a Sage in Training and you haven't already, Make sure you subscribe today. This has been Mr. Bazy, your favorite sage, and I'll see you in the next video.